fellow Toastmasters and guests. Does anyone here know what the Western film Stagecoach, directed by the late John Ford, and The Lone Ranger, with recently um, starring Johnny Depp, have in common? <laughs> it has something to do with today's theme, actually. How about if I mention a few other films? A 2001 Space Odyssey, Back to the Future Part 3, The Searchers. Well, these movies were all filmed in Monument Valley. Have any of you had the chance to experience the magnificent, magical, and majestic views of Monument Valley through film or in person? Well, for those of you who haven't, which looks like all of you here this evening, <laughs> okay, you have um, I want to tell you about my trip to Monument Valley and the beautiful landscapes I saw and some special memories that I had. So it's quite fitting for today's theme. So where is Monument Valley, you may ask? Monument Valley is in Arizona and extends up into Utah. It's part of a multi-million acre Navajo Indian Reservation, and it's part of the Colorado Plateau, which is characterized by vast sand buttes, and it's, they have a range from 400 feet above the floor to 1,000 feet. The park is not part of the National Park Service. It's independently run and controlled by the Navajo Nation. The landscape is overwhelming, not just in the beauty, but also in its size. And the fragile pinnacles of rock, which are mainly of sandstone, are surrounded by miles of mesa, buttes, a few brushes, bushes, and trees. So all of these, it's in a dry, arid landscape as well. And there's a variety of colors, which at first may seem muted, but upon seeing the sunset or sunrise, the park really comes to life. So before human existence, the park was, for hundreds of millions of years, Became, it became the park it is today because of the Rocky Mountains uh, materials that had eroded and deposited layer upon sediments that created kind of a cemented block, which was then gently lifted up from um, underneath the earth. And this pressure had elevated horizontal strata, which was uh, one to three miles above the sea level. And so once what was a basin now became a plateau. And then for 50 million years, rain and wind eroded this plateau, which now has become Monument Valley. And therefore, you'll see these large pinnacles and buttes coming up from what looks like a desert floor. And so for Monument Valley, it's named Monument Valley because there's about 11 monuments that were naturally created from this erosion. So it may look like to a non-Navajo person, they're, they all have different names. So one of them is called the thumb, which looks like a really fat thumb or a giant cowboy boot. Um, but upon arriving to the park two years ago during the summer, I went with a friend of mine from Ireland named Dearman, and I came across that scene from the movies. I said, oh my gosh, this is like the movie. Um, this is where all these famous John Wayne character films were, were filmed. And we first saw what was called the Mitten Buttes and Merrick Buttes. And this is the famous panorama. And I have a photo here, which I'll pass around. But basically, it looks like three different buttes that to non-natives look like hands. And the left and the right, so the east and the west uh, butte, are thought uh, from the native perspective to be spiritual beings who watch over the land. There's also another monument called the Three Sisters, and this looks like a Catholic nun facing her two pupils. So 11 of these monuments can be seen by taking an off-roading trip in a 17-mile loop, or you can go by horseback, which we did one day by a Navajo guide, and then uh, we also took a guided Jeep tour by Navajo, which was really like a old suburban, um, an old suburban that we went off-roading in that you were a little bit skeptical if it would make it out <laughs> because the, to get into the valley, you have to go through an old river basin that's all sand. And so on this trip, 
the first time I saw these colors, it was the brightly, the, the sun, or excuse me, the sky became pink, and we saw the, the mitten buttes, the hands, and it kept changing colors as if it were a wild, fly, a wild fire engulfing a field of grass. It was different oranges and pinks that would go from top to bottom, and they just bathed the buttes in these colors. And then you'd see the bright uh, pink sky behind it. So that's kind of what was so powerful to see. And then at night, you saw a million brilliant little stars just glowing everywhere. You could see all the constellations. But one special moment happened when our Jeep driver, the, guy, the local guide, had a conversation toward the end of our trip. We saw the Anasazi, which were the ancient um, culture that had disappeared before the Navajo. We saw their carvings on the walls. We saw their uh, old abodes into the cliffs. And my friend was from Ireland and said, uh, you know, in Ireland they were not allowed to speak Irish because the English had dominated before they became a nation. And so the guide asked if he spoke Irish and he said yes. And he said, well, can you sing a song? Because in Navajo we retain our culture through song. And so he sang the song and it was this beautiful Irish ballad. My friend's completely shy, so I was just so shocked that he did it. And the Navajo guide followed with, an, with his own Navajo song. And so for me, just the connection of the two cultures and the sense of home and history that was still from the past was still alive was so completely surprising to me. And a really special moment in this connection just happened from these two people from two different cultures, from two different backgrounds. And this memory will stay with me for a long time, um, even as so will the sunset colored buttes that we saw for the last time that evening. So I recommend that you all get out to Monument Valley. <laughs> Tim, maybe you'll be the first, but enjoy what we have because there's so many national parks to see and the culture also brings it alive. Thank you.